But first, if you watch a show regularly, you know that I regularly criticize the left-leaning media for its coverage of police and policing. Police in this country have been under fire from a media generally hell-bent on showing the negative side of policing, not how hard and dangerous it can be. Every day on the show, I do a segment on the dangers police officers face because the rest of the media don't want to think about that. As I always say, there are some bad officers, and they need to be held accountable, period. But I'm always going to call out baseless or gratuitous criticism of police, whether I see it on the far left, as is typically the case, or, as has become increasingly the case these days, on the far right. Last week, as part of a segment we did about the growing anti-law enforcement rhetoric on Fox News, we aired this clip from Laura Ingram's show featuring conservative commentator Julie Kelly. What is the Capitol Police hiding while at the same time they're snooping around uh, Capitol Hill trying to collect what they mm. think is going to be damaging information against Republicans? Kelly was repeating a claim from Republican Congressman Troy Nels that the Capitol Police spied on him. He said the Capitol Police Intelligence Division investigated my office illegally and one of my staffers caught them in the act. Nels claimed the Capitol officers took pictures of, quote, confidential legislative products. Capitol Police thoroughly denied any wrongdoing and said that they entered the office as part of standard security protocol. Quote, if a member's office is left open and unsecured without anyone inside the office, U.S. CP officers are directed to document that and secure the office to ensure nobody can wander in and steal or do anything nefarious. Capitol Police Chief Thomas Manger said the weekend before Thanksgiving, one of our vigilant officers spotted the congressman's door was wide open. And of course, rather than thanking the officers for doing their jobs. This is the typical police bashing that we see in the media. There is no evidence, zero, that this officer was up to no good. Now, Julie Kelly's become one, one of the leading voices attacking the Capitol Police officers on a regular basis. She's even written a book about it. She's called the Capitol Police and D.C. Metro cops the provocateurs of January 6th and claimed they were attacking peaceful protesters and intentionally trying to gin up some conflict. And after this segment aired, she tweeted at me, challenging me to have her on the show to respond. She even bet I would not have her on. As I said to her on Twitter, there's no need to try to taunt me. She could just ask, since I always invite people from all sides on this show. And joining us now is Julie Kelly. Julie, thanks very much for coming on the show. I appreciate it. Thanks, Dan. Sorry about the bet. We didn't really have a wager, but whatever the wager is we come up with, I will pay you for uh, taking my back. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna give you a full minute to respond here to my first question. Because I think the best way for us to do this is I'll ask you a question, I'll give you time, you let me respond, I'll let you respond, et cetera. So I'm not gonna interrupt you for a minute, but I, you know, I am gonna ask you the, the first question, which is the most obvious uh, one here, which is a broad one uh, about the, the Capitol Police. Um, and it seems to me that you and others like you have joined the far left in the typical police bashing uh, that we hear in the media every day. Okay, so first of all, I want to set the premise for what your segment was. Um, my reporting, follow-up reporting, was not based just on Congressman Nell's tweets, but a very thorough investigative report published in Politico by Betsy Swan and Daniel Littman certainly not anyone, reporters or an outlet that would be considered part of the right-wing echo media echo chamber. They published a very extensive investigative report last month talking about this expanded intelligence unit uh, in, among the Capitol Police, headed up by a former Obama um, official that was raising alarms within the department. And this, these are people who sourced this to Politico. It talked about how this new spy agency is basically collecting dossiers on not just Republican lawmakers, Dan, their staffers, their donors, and even their constituents, scrubbing social media accounts to put together negative information. Um, and so we've seen this repeatedly on the right, where so, you take these powerful law enforcement or intelligence agencies, they collect political dirt on the Democrats, uh, on Republicans, and then it's leaked to the media as anonymous law enforcement so, or intelligence officers. We've seen this for the past right, so five that was, years that was, that was more than a minute. Um, so I'm going to ask right. you just a quick uh, follow-up on that. I, 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 that's right. Uh, again, but let's focus on the, the evidence with, that you were talking about, which is about 
an officer. I care about the officers. I care about the rank and file. And you accused an officer who was doing his job, walking past someone's office, of basically committing a crime. And you have no evidence no, that that no, officer did anything wrong. I didn't accuse him of committing a crime. Um, officer, uh, Congressman Nels is the one who raised this issue of Capitol spies with the poli Capitol Police Department, who we know are acting in the best interest of the Democratic Party, snooping around his office, taking photographs not needed. He also showed the door that allegedly was ajar, showed it on Twitter that it automatically closes like most of the other doors. He also said that they were there undercover, not as official Capitol Police officers, but I think portraying themselves as construction workers or something. So, so we if, have plenty if the of officer, If the officer's doing that, that's illegal. I mean, if the officer is engaging in that kind of snooping right. that you're talking about, going into offices and the Capitol Police are then lying about it, right? Because the Capitol Police chief would have to be in on it. Lying about what they were doing, why they were doing it, covering for this officer who's engaging in illegal activity. This is the typical police bashing I deal with from the left all the time, all the time. That the police well, are Dennis, the police are the bad guys. The police are out to get us. The police are targeting us. And it's that same kind of nonsense that we're now hearing from many of you on the far right. Your response. Um, so I write about this in my book. When you're talking about Capitol Police lying and covering up, that's exactly what they've been doing since January 6th. They lied repeatedly and insist and continue to lie that Officer Brian Sicknick was killed in the line of duty killed by Trump supporters on January 6th. That is a lie. He died tragically of natural causes at the age of 42. They covered up, Dan, for months. The name of the officer who shot and killed Ashley Babbitt, an unarmed woman posing no threat. He shot her almost in the face with no warning. Capitol Police covered up his name for months. Um, there was yeah. a faux investigation into Officer Bird. Of course, he was exonerated, still has so his job. Also, Dan, I'll, I'll, Capitol let, Police I'll let people are decide. Here, right. Here's the good news. People can decide for themselves and go watch the video of Ashley Babbitt climbing through the window and looking at the totality of what happened. And they can decide for themselves. I, I mean, I know that because second. you wrote a wait, book wait. on this that you think you I get it. You think you know better than the investigators. I get it. I know you think this is the same stuff I deal with from the left. I get it. They people. always tell me that the cops investigations are BS, that the cops were the wrong guys, the yeah. cops are the bad guys. I get it. I deal with this all the time. This is nothing new for me. But 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 again, let, let, I'll let you quickly respond to that because I just attacked Good. you a little bit. So let me let you quickly so, respond to that. And then I want to ask you a follow up. So in terms of your calling out the hypocrisy of the right now uh, criticizing police officers, please tell me another example of a, a, a fatal shooting of an unarmed political protester by a federal police officer where that name was covered up, where there was no evidence of a legitimate investigation. He was exonerated without any reporting and kept his job. And the media not only covered up his name, helped herald this man as a hero. Right. Is that going to be it, the new standard now, Dan, where political every protesters day, go in and they right. can be shot they, at point blank range by a federal officer and exonerated yeah, without a legitimate uh, investigation? Uh, again, the notion that there wasn't a, a, an investigation is made up by you. That's just made up. That's just not Have true. Have you seen the report? I understand. Have you seen the report? Uh, 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 oh, wait, wait. Uh, two different issues, right? Two different issues. So, oh. th th again, your position is there was no investigation. We know a court, again, assuming, I know you think everything the Capitol Police say is untrue and they're lying about everything. So when they say that there was an investigation, of course there was an investigation. Of course that this hero, Ashley Babbitt, and again, I feel horrible for her, but the bottom line is when you watch the video, it is clear what happened. I say this in, when, we, when, when I have people on this show in other contexts with police shootings, where when I watch it, when I see the video, and I think that the police are being unfairly criticized, I say the same thing. But let me ask you about Michael Fanone, all right? You've accused him of being a crisis actor, in essence, mm -hmm. sort of pretending to be a victim when he testified before the January 6th committee um, back in July. You said crisis actor Fanone just beat on the table and said it's disgraceful. I want to show the video of Officer Fanone getting a stun gun driven into his neck. Danny Rodriguez, 38-year-old Trump supporter, confessed to attacking Fanone and I guess he's lying too. He's part of this grand conspiracy. 
Well, let's correct though. He's not an officer anymore, Dan. He's now a CNN commentator. So all okay, of his nonstop yeah. media interviews that he did since January have paid off. My reference to him as a crisis actor was his performance in front of the January 6th committee, part of which helped him get a new gig as a CNN contributor. So let's not overlook that. Furthermore, why would they release uh, Officer Fanon's body cam? Uh, I would like to see, except for all the cherry picked clips that the media and the DOJ allow, why can't we see all of his uh, body cam footage? We don't have evidence of it. My reference to him as a crisis actor was the performance that he put out, that he was pounding the table condemning Republican lawmakers who didn't tow the January 6th narrative line about what happened to him. Officer yeah, so, Fanon. So just so, yeah, I was just going to ask you, just so, just so I understand the, the scope of the conspiracy, right? It's the Capitol Police, right? They've, they're joined by the Department of Justice, I assume, led by um, the Department of Justice, you know, entirely corrupt, the I, and I know the yes. Nancy Pelosi piece is a separate <laughs> issue, right? But but I, I I know she's the the great the, the leader of the conspiracy. But all of them are willing to risk their careers and their futures to lie and deceive and put out phony videos about what actually happened, all because they want to have a narrative about January sixth, right? We just want all the video. You just talked about Capitol Police and DOJ working together. They now, for over a year, have concealed 14,000 hours of surveillance vi of video. What about the video that's out there? Captured. Now, wait a second. You want to talk about truth and transparency. We are not getting transparency, and this is something I would think that you would want. 14,000 hours of surveillance video captured inside and outside the Capitol that day. Let's see it. Why are Capitol Police claiming sovereign immunity and refusing to hand over documents, emails, and communications between that agency, Nancy Pelosi, and the FBI to talk about why the Capitol was intentionally unsecure that day? This is the most opaque, yeah. unaccountable police agency on the planet, and they just got $2.1 billion in new taxpayer dollars from Congress. We need but, accountability, okay, so transparency right. I, from you get, them. I got you a full you answer there. You all that but, you want and smear me as oh. anti-cop. I want the truth about January 6th. Uh, right. I understand you want, but, but what you don't want to focus on is the evidence we actually have, right? You ignore the actual video that we have of the incident, and you keep talking about what we don't have. What we have is really frightening, scary stuff with cops being attacked by certain, not all the protesters, not all of them, but by certain protesters. I have actually defended some of the people who just sort of pranced into the Capitol and walked right out and said that I think that they should not have the book thrown at them. I'm talking about the folks they who are. attack police officers. I find mm -hmm. that to be the most reprehensible thing people can do. You get a final quick word. Well, I also encourage you to um, interview Victoria White, who was a woman who was beaten repeatedly over the head and punched in the face by two DC Metro police officers, which we have footage of. Why don't you interview Capitol Police about what they did with the body of Roseanne Boyland, another tr uh, female Trump supporter who mm -hmm. died likely at the hands of police that day. Um, and we can't get the truth about what happened to her. The likely is always a nice but qualifier. You don't know the truth. Yeah, all right. Don't know the Fair truth. enough. All right, Julie Kelly. Thanks, Dan. Interesting to talk to you. I appreciate you coming on the show, and I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thanks for having me on. Thank you for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.